So, I mentioned in my last video that just three years ago, I had no money with me. I was broke. Literally. All I had was my determination to make money and a PayPal account. But just this week, I was raised up a very interesting question. And that is, how do I start being self-employed just like I did? But for everyone who doesn't know me, I'm Matt. I have a pretty boring life. I study all day. I don't spend. I don't flirt. I save. I invest. Pretty boring for me. I started being self-employed when I was 16 at my senior high years. And since then, I was able to sell 100 plus websites and that helped me start my journey. Going back to the question, how do I start being self-employed? Every field is different and your situation may vary from mine. So what I'm going to do in this video is that I'm going to tell you how I was able to start on my own so you can get some ideas if you do start on your own. But before we start the video, I would humbly ask you to smash the like button. It will definitely help this video out. So enough of the chit chat. Let's start. So what do you do when you have no money and no plan? You watch YouTube videos. That's right. That's exactly what I did. I can't remember the exact keywords that I use on the YouTube search bar. It would probably be around the lines of how do I make money online as a teen? But I do remember that during that time, Shopify was fairly new and dropshipping was about to get so big. There were videos about it everywhere and they made it look like dropshipping was super easy. I got excited and I decided I could start with this. However, as for every business venture, you would need some capital. Shopify will cost around $13 per month and a GoDaddy domain would also cost around $12 per year. And they made it look so easy that I thought I could just run a single $5 Facebook ad and get a ton of sales. If I was able to hit 5 to 10 sales, I would definitely be able to recoup my initial investment. So. I had to raise some capital. Now I'm going to be completely honest with you. The way I raised capital was not the most ethical thing that you would do to start capital. If you can say that raising capital without any money is super hard. You're going to trade two of your most valuable assets, your time and your skills. I was good at photo and video editing. Plus I knew a little bit here and there about YouTube. So I created videos on how to pirate Adobe, Netflix, and all the paid subscription apps that you could find out there. I would put the download links in an AdFly URL shortener. Those are links which when clicked redirects you to a 5 second ad just like here on YouTube. You could definitely skip the ad. But just from that, I was able to get around the number of $60 or so. I'm both ashamed of doing that but I mean... I live in a third world country where everything is basically pirated, so not too guilty. Capital check, knowledge check, all that's left is execution. Just from that $60, I was able to start a website, buy my domain, and run some ads. And what do you know? You guessed it, zero sales. It's virtually impossible to just get an easy sale, just buy a $5 Facebook ad with just some random targeting with no testing. This thing is complicated. And so I burned through all my $60 and you know, all I had was my website. But just when I was about to run out of luck, I was able to discover Exchange Marketplace. It's basically a marketplace created by Shopify themselves where you can sell your websites. Then what do you know? After a day, I was able to sell the website and get my $60 back. Now, after getting the $60 back, I was still on the high of dropshipping and I thought, maybe this is my second chance. I then tried to create another website with a different product and run the same tactic, zero sales, zero sales. So I decided to list my website for the second time. Boom! After an hour, I was able to sell that website, but this time for $80. Now from that single sale, I was actually able to profit $20. And ting, the light bulb flashed. I realized that this has more potential than actually drop shipping. Next thing you know, I was creating Shopify websites with 500 products, which is the maximum, and selling it for $300. I was basically doing the dirty work for others so that they could just buy a ready-made store and just run, run some ads to it. It saved them time. However, 
I noticed that exchange marketplace had high fees. That's when I discovered another marketplace which is named Flippa and this is the game changer. There were more buyers on Flippa than on exchange marketplace. That essentially meant that I could easily charge more for my work especially because Flippa was super secure. From then on out I was able to get reviews and ratings for my work and I was able to get reputation on the marketplace. Basically business was booming. I was working 12 hour days. I was trading mostly my time for money. But that wasn't where most of my money came from. By selling tens of websites on the marketplace, I was able to get repeat clients and people who trust me for my work. Because we already had a successful transaction, they trusted me more, we built report, and they wanted more projects be done by me. I would have offers around $400 to $500 just for a single work. I got into the Shopify wave and I surfed like hell. And that's it. That's how I started. However, I'm regretfully saying that those days are pretty much behind me. I've left that career path mainly due to the decrease of demand on the marketplace. I noticed that I was getting less messages and offers from my past clients. Basically, the Shopify wave has ended. However, just to give you more value, I'm going to give you my three key learnings from that experience. First, one of the biggest mistakes that I did was hire my classmates during my senior years. So sometimes school would get a lot of my time. I decided I needed some help to ease some of the workload. And the only persons that I could trust during that time were my classmates. I had no idea how to delegate then and I couldn't trust anyone outside of my circle. My mistake was not setting formal contracts on how much will they be paid, what will be their tasks, and what will be their deliverables, and that sort of stuff. I learned that if you're going to be managing people and you're going to be hiring, you're going to have to set clear and concise tasks that they will be doing so that they will be paid properly and according to the agreement. Worst part was that one of them was actually very demanding and I had to overpay. I kind of lost more money than I should have. So lesson number one, hire employees, not classmates. Second, I did not scale this big enough as I should have. The opportunity was already in front of me. The demand was super high and I was already able to build a reputation out of my name. I was at the right time and at the right moment, I just didn't maximize my potential. This is a little bit connected to the first takeaway. I think I took profits way too early and I should have instead hired the team. That would have opened me to countless possibilities. Like for example, instead of just designing websites for my clients, I could have hired an ad specialist. I would sell that service to my clients as an upsell. I would have this $500 offer that would consist of the website, social media sites, and etc. But I would also have another offer, the same offer, but with ad creation, ad creatives, and ad management, for a thousand dollars. See, especially today where every business is essentially gonna be online, I could have made more money during this quarantine than ever before. You know, I might still do it. I might not. Lastly, when it comes to being self-employed, these are typically people who want to do everything by themselves. And that's why it's called self-employed. But if you've kind of reached that point wherein you think you have that potential to grow, not just a single person but into an actual company you're gonna have to develop systems you're gonna have to hire you're gonna have to write documentation because the truth is i think a lot of self-employed people including myself are full of pride they think no one can do the quality of work that they do and that's where they get stuck on just being self-employed and unable to expand into an actual business. This documentation will basically serve as your kind of handbook so that if you do try to expand this into a business and you see it fit, you're gonna have this documentation that you can just pass on to your team and they will handle the rest. So that's it. If you are someone who's starting their self-employed journey, I wish you luck. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, 
please smash the like button. And if you want to be updated with this journey, hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so you won't miss a thing. I'll see you in the next video.